Okay, so we're checking out Vituvia's newest e-bike. This is the SX20 Antelope. Comes in two colors, as you can see here, the uh, fire engine red, and also comes in a silver color. Yeah, I gotta say that this um, red glossy paint finish on this uh, bike is really nice, uh, sharp looking. If you're into the uh, that red color, plus you've got the matching uh, colored rims, so this has red rims as well, so overall looks really sharp. Uh, obviously this is their newest bike and it definitely stands out compared to some of their older models. So this is a folding e-bike, it's got 20 by 4 inch fat tires, uh, folds in the middle there, uh, there's some safety latches to release that as well as the handlebar. The handlebar has two latches, uh, one for adjusting the angle of the, the uh, grips and then of course the main uh, latch to uh, fold down the handle so you can fold down the bike. Of course the seat height is adjustable and they're recommending riders between 4 foot 11 and 6 foot 2. So this does feature a 750 watt rear hub motor. I believe it bursts to a thousand watts. There's no spec on the product page indicating exactly what the maximum output is but it to me, compared to some of the other 750 watt motors that I've ridden, this feels about the same, around 1000 watts. The battery is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour LG battery, so they're saying that inside the cells are made by LG. Uh, it does seem like it does have less sag compared to some of the other uh, sort of non-branded batteries out there, so at least that's going to give you a little bit more confidence in the output power as you're riding along, especially later on uh, in the pack when you're towards empty. Now they are advertising a maximum range of 52 miles on this battery. Of course it's going to vary quite a bit on your riding style, uh, the terrain you're riding in, and etc. You are able to charge the battery inside the bike. There's a little uh, door or a little rubber cover that you can pull back and then that will expose the charge port. Of course you can use the key to unlock the battery and pull the battery out if you want to charge the battery outside the bike as well. The battery charger is a two amp hour charger, so it'll take about five to six hours to charge from empty to full on this battery. So you have a seven gear Shimano Turney derailleur in the back and a Shimano SIS shifter in the front. That's pretty standard and it works pretty well. This one does come with Logan hydraulic disc brake and the rotors are Tektro 160 millimeter disc brakes. The uh, front fork suspension does work pretty well on this bike, smooths out the ride. It does have a lockout and a preload adjustment, and I did not have it bottom out on me at all. So the uh, bike display on this one is a little bit small, it's on the left side, pretty simple, and actually just give you all the information you need without presenting you with too, too much information. Uh, just press the M button to uh, turn on the bike, you have to long press that and the plus and minus will adjust your pedal assist levels. I think it defaults to zero, which is no pedal assist uh, when you first turn on the bike. And, uh, there's five levels of pedal assist, one through five. I'll show you a little bit later here what in the speed test what speed each pedal assist will give you. You can, of course, just ride it in uh, pedal assist level zero and just ride it as a regular bike if you want, or you can also just ride it with just the throttle only. There is a fairly bright LED light in the front with a reflector. It doesn't indicate in the product page how how much wattage that light is. I'm estimating, based on some of the other lights I've seen, somewhere around three to five watts, it looks like. Uh, it's very directional. Uh, it, it does definitely, if you point in the front, it will, it will actually change as you uh, steer. So it'll point in the direction you're steering. Uh, but it's um, quite directional, so you just basically see what's in front of you. Now overall the uh, construction of the frame looks very solid, uh, the welds look really good, the paint job is excellent, uh, very nice. As I was riding the bike around, the, the, the bike felt really solid, I didn't feel like any had any creaks or rattles or anything uh, unusual like in terms of design flaws, it just felt like really solid overall. And it is designed to hold up to 330 pounds even though there's no uh, cargo rack on this one. You could add one potentially. There's, there's definitely some mount points for a rack, but I don't, don't see any accessories for a rear rack on this one yet. And it um, doesn't look like there's any fenders available for this one yet either. Probably those will come out later. 
overall the cable management on this bike is pretty decent uh, there's a like a sleeve that kind of holds the main bundle of uh, cables together in the front they're a little bit on the long side uh, obviously you need a little bit of length there slack to fold the bike down that's pretty obvious um, they don't rattle around or anything like that but they just seem a little bit uh, a little bit a little bit longer than necessary uh, but overall it's pretty clean there's a nice um, point in the frame uh, underneath on the, on, the, on the underside of the, the front part of the frame where all the wires co go in and then the exit point's actually pretty clean it's right on the rear side uh, where the wheel is it's kind of uh, kind of stealth uh, I guess if the battery weren't black on this bike if they made it red it would probably make it look like it's not an e-bike so I know that's kind of the trend now before e-bikes were kind of more obvious than now it's a little bit more stealth. I think those designs are more popular now because maybe you don't want to advertise to people that you have an e-bike and I think those are a little bit, um, I guess, become becoming targets for people in, in terms of getting bikes getting stolen because they're more valuable. So having that stealth look does appeal to a lot of people. Now overall the build of the bike, pretty typical for most uh, e-bikes that you get. That are shipped they obviously have to put you have to attach the handlebar that's the first thing you have to put on and then the front wheel uh, pretty standard stuff here uh, there's, there's obviously there were no fenders or racks to install on this particular bike but it's pretty straightforward uh, compared to a lot of other e-bikes that there's I'm pretty much identical yeah, I just followed the instructions in the manual of course but I've built so many of these now that it's uh, pretty obvious what to do you know for me I don't even have to read the manual anymore All right, so level one, we're about eight and a half miles per hour. And level two. About 12 miles an hour. Level three. about 16.8 miles per hour in level three, about 17 miles per hour. Now we're going to level four. Back to level one, now we're just going to do throttle only, and I'm pretty sure it just goes full speed on throttle. Yep, we're going, uh, probably going to hit that maximum 20, 25 miles an hour. over 25 miles an hour. So overall, the riding characteristics of this bike, very solid. I'd say that if you're mainly riding on like city streets, sidewalks, etc., it's just going to be totally comfortable. Uh, it's got a nice uh, front fork suspension. It's a very smooth ride. It doesn't have any rear suspension. So the seat is firm. It's uh, stable. I don't feel like it, it hurts or anything like that, but it is uh, been on the thin side for the cushioning. Uh, there's no rear suspension, so if you're 
typically riding on a lot of like rough roads or if you're mountain biking this, um, this seat might be uncomfortable after a while. It kind of depends on who you are. Maybe a um, you might want to upgrade to a different seat with a seat post suspension if you're looking for a little more comfort on, on those little bumps. But for me, this was fine uh, because the fat tires did you know provide enough uh, cushion for those little bumps on the streets. The bike felt fast enough for me. I could get it up to 25 miles an hour on maximum speed, which is plenty for me. I believe that makes this a class three e-bike. On the product page, for some reason, it says it's speed limited to 15 miles per hour, which is not true. Uh, I was able to get mine up to 25 miles per hour, no problem. Acceleration is more than adequate at 750 watts. I think most people that's definitely fine. In fact, if you're not, uh, uh, if you're a beginner e-bike rider, you might find the power a little bit too much to handle. So you'd be, be careful if you're not sure how to handle that power. And I felt that the acceleration from the motor and the power provided by the battery was pretty good in this model. All right, so that's going to cover for this video. Yeah, the link for this bike will be down in the video description. There might be coupon codes added at some point. Uh, so if you don't see anything down there now, there might be some later on. Um, I think as, we, as Christmas approaches, like they, they might be having more promotions. But I think right now there's a $100 coupon currently. There might be more in the future. But if you're watching this in the past the holiday season, there might be some different discount codes. So check down in the video description. That'll give you the latest link and the latest prices. Also down in the video description will be a playlist to my other e-bike videos. So if this model isn't something that uh, you know suits you, then you know check out my playlist. There's probably another bike that might be a little bit more interesting to you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.